welcome to automate container image creation and deploy to Kubernetes clusters. This session is packed with lots of learning, content, and demos, so let's begin. We'll be showing open source tools and enterprise grade solutions that you can use today to automate your container creation so you can include in your pipeline. Containers are fun to work with when you have a manageable set. Even with hundreds of containers like on the right, we can still somewhat manage by hand. But when you go to scale, there's a point where you don't have enough hands. Uh, running containers at scale is a logistical nightmare, especially when many enterprises are running thousands and more typically tens of thousands of containers, if not more. How do you fix a bug or a CVE in this situation? How do you fix a virus or even find one? It can be impossible manually and clunky or risky with the wrong tool. This is a 2020 CNCF survey that shows teams are still finding containers complex, they're hard to keep secure, it's difficult to train staff and a plethora of other issues, especially when developers want to focus on writing code and not on something that's more operational like containers. Taking this single example here out of many possible examples where this can go wrong, here we have devs that are building their own containers with dependencies downloaded from un unknown websites. Suddenly you have multiple teams building containers using different OS versions, different JDK files, different dependencies, etc. You get the idea. Things can get unruly very quick, especially if you have an issue. This is where VMware Tanzu Build Service can help. VMware Tanzu Build Service provides automatic image builds and updates, even down to the OS layer, providing complete control over images that are built automatically. There's improved security, it's easy to track and patch containers, and there's also included notary signing, there's met metadata that, that can improve audits, and you can enforce policy to ensure compliance to what is actually being used. Tanzu Build Service is built from open source projects like Cloud Native Build Packs and KPAC that produce open container initiative containers that can run on any cloud and are backward compatible with Docker. Quickly, Cloud Native Build Packs are supported by top tech firms. Even GitLab implements Cloud Native Build Packs. Cloud Native Build Packs have been around for a decade since 2011. Cloud Native Build Packs are imperative and can build a container simply with the command pack build and you include your app name. And it automatically detects dependencies and packages all of this into a, an OCI, OCI compliant container image. So we're going to be using the terminal to build our container with our Java Spring source code. We're going to use pack build, our container, GitLab container, and a builder that's used for Java. We're going to fast forward. Our container has finished building. We have our GitLab container. And if we do Docker images for, and query that container, we have it here. And it can run pretty much anywhere. KPAC, on the other hand, is another open source tool that's behind Tanzu Build Service, and it's declarative in nature. It's a Kubernetes native tool. In the image config here, you can specify a repo and a commit to trigger automatic image builds. Or you can trigger builds across your thousands of containers if you need to patch an image. Let's look at our CI CD pipeline that takes code from a commit and deploys that to a Kubernetes cluster. Quick side note of terms if you're just getting started with GitLab CI CD. A job is a singular task, like testing code or running a script, in the real world baking a cake possibly. A runner executes the jobs, so this could be like a chef, a cook, or a cake machine baking the cakes. A stage is a job or many jobs. Uh, for example, for our code, it could be testing the code, could be stage one, stage two could be the build, and each stage could have mo multiple steps or multiple jobs. Uh, like stage one could do multiple tests of code, stage two with the build, could um, build several image layers, so it needs several jobs to run that, or build several images. And the order matters. You wouldn't want to build until you test, or you wouldn't want to um, bake your cake until you prepare your supplies and mix. So GitLab CI-CD is all these concepts working together to form pipelines. And in our real world example, it would be a cake factory that takes raw materials and churns out a cake. You just hand it over the flour and the eggs, and then the cakes pop out on the other side. Let's go through the different stages of our pipeline so that we know what's going on once we start the demo. So in the initial stage, we'll have our developer submit their code, which triggers the entire pipeline down to deploying our code to Kubernetes. 
This code is taken by VMware Tanzu Build Service and converted into an open container initiative container image that can live on any cloud. This container image is then uploaded to our image registry. Then a series of tests are performed and it's deployed to our Kubernetes cluster, which is a VMware Tanzu Kubernetes grid cluster that can live on any cloud and also on-prem or in a hybrid situation. Here's the main repository for our GitLab pipeline. It's called Spring Music and it contains different files and directories that have what we need to run our pipeline and different files that we have for our source code for our application for Spring Music. Once the source code gets submitted through the pipeline and deployed to Kubernetes, this is what it looks like. It says Spring Music and it has a few albums. Back to our main repository. So we're back in our repository in our IDE here using VS Code. Um, we're going to go into our header class here and change the title for Spring Music from Spring Music to how about just GitLab Connect. Save that, go to GitHub, add our changes here, GitLab Connect 2021, just save that commit, push, and let's look at our pipeline. If you click on CICD pipelines, then into this latest commit, GitLab Connect 2021, we can see here a visualization of our pipeline with each of our stages, set registry creds, build, test, review, all these production, performance, all these different stages correspond to a different stage in your GitLab CI YAML, which we'll be seeing next. So please re reference these in those files, build, test, review. We are setting these stages. You can see these different stages that I'm highlighting, test, review, build, in the GitLab CI YAML. That's the .gitlab-ci YAML in your main repository. This is what sets the different stages. There is one little difference, as you can see, static testing. That's not in this graphic on the left, but if you go into your CI test.gitlab-ci YAML, this is where we're creating that static testing stage. This stage, the static testing stage, is very simple. It uses a Java container image from Vietnami and runs a couple of tests on the Spring Music app. Now taking a look at our GitLab CI YAML that we have here, looking at into greater detail, we can see that we're running a lightweight Linux image called Alpine. We're also using a lot of environment variables, for example, for our Postgres database, for Docker, etc. cetera. Um, within these variables, some of these that include the prefix CI underscore, CI underscore, especially in other uh, of our GitLab uh, configuration files, you will see this similar pre prefix, and that's provided by GitLab, and those environment variables will be populated by GitLab in, in those files. We do not recommend to use this prefix for environment variables for that reason, um, especially when using your own custom variables, please give them a different prefix. It, it will cause less confusion. Going on to the stages, you might ask yourself, where are all these stages coming from? Where is the canary stage? Where is the production stage, where's cleanup, um, where are these configured? Are these pre-made by GitLab? Well, the answer is some of them are and some of them aren't. The include section has all of these configurations for our pipeline. Let's take a closer look at the code. Looking at the code, um, we're taking the same GitLab CI YAML file and just um, splitting them in two. We're showing the stages section here and the include section on the right. They are just split screen. We're doing this just to show them side by side. So this static testing does come from this file, test GitLab CI YAML. And let's look at that again, even though we did previously. So this is our test GitLab CI YAML and the stage it creates is static testing. So this is one of the files that is creating one of these, one of these stages. For example, our set registry creds does, does correspond to this file. Our build stage does get created by this configuration here, 
the build configuration. And like so for many of these files, but not for all of them. Some of these files, as you can tell from this URL in the notes, are coming from GitLab themselves. These are previous uh, configurations that can be used by anyone that's using GitLab CI CD, and they're common actions that you might want to perform. And it's nice to have them so you don't have to build them yourself. So we've broken down the GitLab CI YAML file into the stages and include section. And we've seen that the different stages can correspond to a configura configuration file on the right, which um, if you're seeing the CI directory prepended to one of these YAML files, then you know that these YAML files are custom stages that were made. For example, the static testing stage that we've seen previously. Let's take another look at that. Here's the st static testing stage under the CI directory that tests the code in our Spring Music application. Looking at the CI update GLR creds GitLab CI YAML, we can see that this is our set registry creds stage. That's the next stage that was specified here. So what does this configuration file do? This one uses this Im the, an image of this name that it gets from the GitLab registry and runs a script called kubeconfig.sh. It also creates a name for a secret. These, are, these right here are environment variables from GitLab that we referenced before. Then we save the registry password that we are getting for uh, the GitLab registry. And we're going to store this to our TBS, our Tanzu build service. And again, this would not be a registry password, but you, in real world, you might have something else like a token. Here we have KPAC, our open source tool, um, creating a secret for us. And then it's going to store the secret on the TBS cluster, and it's going to use that to authenticate with the image registry. In this case, the GitLab registry that we reference. So we just finished looking at the section that sets our registry credentials for Tanzu build service and the container image re registry so they can communicate and send things back and forth. Let's look at our next stage, our build stage. In this stage, we have an image that we use from our GitLab registry, and we use this image for our stage. In that image, we create this script right here that creates the kubeconfig and the context that is needed by the, by the Tanzu build service. In this next section right here, we're using the KPAC CLI to check the status of the image here. If the image does not, if the image exists, then it'll patch the image with the latest commit. And if it does not exist, it'll create a new image based on that source code. This is completely hands-off and automatic. Even though we are using CLI commands here, um, this was a design choice for this pipeline, but it's not really needed. It could be completely hands-off and just be kicked off by changes in a commit, and TBS is smart enough to recognize that and build a new image and send that through your pipeline. So this pretty much takes us through our whole pipeline. The rest of the stages you see here come from GitLab. They're stages that people use a lot, um, and we've employed them. So pretty much all the stages in this section, almost all of them, come from GitLab's deploy GitLab CI YAML. And we're just reusing those jobs that, that they have in that YAML. So as we can see, our pipeline has finished running. All these stages now have check marks that our pipeline finished running. There are no, no longer any icons that are showing progress. And every stage is complete. So our pipeline has taken bra source code use Tensu build service to, to build a container and deploy that to our Kubernetes cluster, which is Tensu Kubernetes grid. So now it's time to see the change that we made to the title right here in our application by refreshing this page. So just as a reminder, we're going to refresh and look for this title, GitLab Connect 2021, which was from our first commit. It automatically refreshed, and it's GitLab Connect 2021, completing our pipeline from raw source code, taking you all the way through the pipeline to a working application using Tanzu build service to create your containers automatically and Tanzu Kubernetes grid to host this application.